who first shared their stories in caves, connected art, nature, and science, led us toward new horizons. Who thought to capture motion, spark an engine to life, turn television into a playground? Every day, you create the playful, the functional, and the unexpected. You break down walls and take us to astonishing places. Tell stories, leap borders, and create beauty for tomorrow. Because at Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it, where everyone has a chance to shape the world. Good afternoon, South APAC, to uh, everyone joining us for our, our rather diverse uh, region from India through to Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and Pacific. Uh, I'm Andy Donovan, uh, Regional Head of Marketing for Unity. Uh, today, I'm joined uh, by Sean, Sean in Kuala Lumpur, who's today's main speaker. How are you doing, Sean? Hey, Andy, I'm doing great. How's the weather? weather there? The weather's good, six and a half thousand kilometers. Pretty sunny here today oh, in nice. Brisbane, Australia. Um, kicking on with the intro, just a few pointers uh, and interaction uh, observations to make in the webinar today. If you're joining us on Zoom, please do not use the chat for questions. All questions should be put in the Q&A box. Uh, they're the only ones we're going to be answering. And if you're joining us in Zoom, please don't use the raise hand function. Uh, if you're joining us on, on uh, one of the streaming services today, such as YouTube, uh, you can place your questions in the chat box there and we will relay them in the session at the end. And the duration of today's webinar is about 45 minutes. Unity developers and Unity technology is being used in a lot of different industries from automotive uh, engineering and construction through the automotive, transportation manufacturing industries and education in film and animation, uh, as well as the core area of computer games where we were born from. Um, and as such, um, to the next slide, um, there are amazing opportunities when you become a Unity certified developer, uh, and there are many different levels of that, all the way up to, uh, to a certified instructor. Um, so the possibilities are endless uh, if you have Unity as a competency. And just a few recent announcements uh, that we've made, uh, new people, new companies that have, technologies that have joined the Unity uh, family. Um, recently, we had Weta Digital join. Weta Digital is known for Academy Award, win Academy Award winning special effects uh, in movies um, such as Avatar, um, the upcoming Batman movie, Doctor Strange, amongst uh, many, many others. And, uh, and most recently, we've had uh, Ziva Dynamics join. Ziva Dynamics create virtual humans with state-of-the-art biomechanical simulation running in real time in Unity. And stick with us to the end, complete the survey and uh, stand a chance. One lucky, one lucky uh, attendee uh, who has registered will be winning a prize pack you can see there on the left. And uh, if you'd like to uh, scan the page now, if you are joining us on any of the platforms, Sean, Twitch, Discord, Facebook, YouTube, um, if you're joining us on Zoom, you've already registered, you don't need to do this, but if you're joining us on another platform, please scan this to register. Uh, if we find your name in the end and you're the winner and you're not registered, um, it won't qualify. Next slide. And here are some past winners uh, that we've had who won these packs. Okay, moving on. Today's webinar. Oh, and I... Forgot to mention, new people have joined the Unity family. Um, Pixies joined us also last year. So that's the topic of today's webinar, um, Unlock CAD and Mesh Data with Pixies. And so I'm going to hand that over to you now, Sean. Hello everyone, my name is Sean. I am a field engineer at Unity Technologies. And today I'm going to talk about unlocking your CAD and mesh data using Pixies. First, let's talk about Pixies in a nutshell. Now in traditional 3D visualization and digital content creation tools like Unity, 3ds Max, Maya, Blender, can all natively read up 
3D files containing tessellated objects, or meshes like FBX, DAE, 3DS, and OBJ files. These 3D files are represented as vertices, edges, faces, triangles, or polygons. Now, however, native CAD files created for engineering and manufacturing in professional CAD solutions such as Katia, SolidWorks, and Inventor can't be easily imported in these tools. These 3D models are represented by mathematical expressions or parametric geometries. You can think of these as vector art and raster art, both incompatible with one another. And Pixies is the best in class tessellator, perfect for creating meshes from any CAD or 3D data fast and efficiently. Like CAD faces need to be translated into tessellated surfaces, also called meshes, to be rendered in 3D applications. Moreover, these CAD models can contain additional engineering and design data, such as metadata or PMIs, like product manufacturing information. And these data can be very useful to perform a targeted data preparation process based on those targeted properties. And Pixie serves as the bridge you know, to bring, uh, to convert these uh, models to uh, meshes and additionally still be able to retain all those metadata bringing it into Unity. So additionally, natively created tessellated geometries that are exported as FBX files from Pixies can still be re-imported into Pixie Studio for further optimization. So attributes like normals and UVs can either be kept or recreated in Pixie Studio. So one of the many helpful features in Pixies is none other than the tessellation function, which of course helps you create meshes from CAD data. And these are of course represented by triangles. The more triangles used, the more realistic the rendering, but the more computation is also required. Here you can see the tessellate function comes with four default presets that define the value of all parameters in the function from low, medium to high. We've mentioned this before, and that's that models that contain BREP surfaces or CAD models can be retessellated directly in the scene without having to re-import the model all over again. The retessellate functions allows you to fine tune tessellation quality of entire models or individual parts in the scene. So if you need more details in some areas, you can run a targeted retessellation process to control that specific quality that you're aiming for. A huge part of data preparation consists of optimizing the mesh density by finding the perfect balance between visual quality and polygon count. The most common way to reduce the poly count is by decimating meshes either aiming at an acceptable mesh quality or aiming at a precise poly count. Now, Pixies provides decimation algorithms for two decimation strategies, decimate to quality and decimate to target. Each strategy has its pros and cons and should be used according to what the situation requires. The decimate to quality function is used to efficiently reduce a model's poly count while preserving its visual quality as much as possible. It works by intelligently deleting the vertices of the meshes to prevent smoothing artifacts and topological irregularities. The algorithm behind the decimate to quality function uses a combination of four main parameters, which are geometrical tolerances to obtain the lightest model possible in terms of poly count, while keeping an acceptable quality. First of these four parameters is surfacing tolerance. And this is basically what you're seeing now on screen. Surfacing tolerance defines the maximum distance between vertices of the original model and resulting simplified surfaces. The higher the value, the looser the definition of your model. So yeah, see the changes on the surfaces of the hemisphere, for example, of the looseness mentioned. Next, we have linic tolerance. Linic tolerance defines the maximum distance between linic vertices of the original model and the resulting simplified lines. The linic tolerance is meant to preserve the boundaries of the original surface where the lines or the edges are sharp or hard. 
Now, see how there's no changes on the surface of the hemisphere, but the supporting edges defining the hard edge differ from frame to frame in this preview. The thick yellow line shows the lines that are affected by this parameter. Normal tolerance defines the maximum angle existing between the original normal and those inter interpolated on the simplified surfaces. The normal tolerance setting preserves the quality of how the light reacts on the surface of the mesh. Combined with the surfacic tolerance setting, this will act as a quality controller, keeping polygons where the surface curvature is important and preserving the visual quality of the model. And finally, the texture coordinates tolerance. This setting is meant to preserve the UV or texture coordinates while decimating a mesh. The higher the value is, the more aggressive the decimation is. There are five solutions in the entire Pixies tool bag, Studio, Plugin, Scenario Processor, Review, and Loader. We'll run through a few of them to show you how they can help you in your workflow today. Each solution has its own unique role in bringing CAD data into Unity either via runtime or during development. We'll revisit this diagram after a demo on Pixies so you have a better understanding of how everything fits together. For now, let's take a look at two core solutions, Pixies Studio and Pixies Plugin. So on to our first demo, we are going to take a look at Pixies Studio. And here we are in Pixies Studio. And from here, I'm going to show you how you can import CAD data and further optimize it into tessellated mesh. So I'm going to do a raw import just to show you the entire process. Scroll down and get my Pixies demo bricks. And here we have our CAD uh, bricks model. You can see it's represented by uh, parametric geometry, all just lines and curves. And this is something that we can't really visualize within a 3D application like uh, Maya, Max, and Unity. Right? You have to actually convert this into tessellated mesh data with polygons, triangles, and everything so that we can actually render it. So first things first, you'll notice that on this model itself, uh, it's a bit offset, so we'll fix that in a bit. But I want to draw your attention to some of the metadata that comes with this uh, object. You can see that, uh, as we mentioned before, it comes with things like its part number, uh, its product manufacturing information, things like its owner, the manufacturer, the origin date, and its revision code. So all of these, you can use them to either, in your 3D interactive application, show them when you're users are interacting with it, or uh, by knowing all this information of that product, you can run an automated process on them, maybe assigning a specific material to the part or replacing it with a different part or attach certain scripts to the part uh, to have it uh, execute certain things based on what it is, right? So we'll show you in a bit right after Pixie Studio when we go into uh, Pixie's plugin. Uh, that's within Unity, and we'll show you how that can be done. But first, let's fix this uh, pivot point that's offset from our model. So what we can do here is just right-click on it, set the transform pivot point to the solution center. So now it's all fixed. And next, just move this down to the ground and rotate it so that it's facing the right side. There we go. Okay, so we've got the little things out of the way. Now let's take a look at how we can um, tessellate this into a mesh. So before we start tessellating, we'll have to do some repair work. And that's actually really easy in Pixies. So no matter how your engineer has uh, modeled these CAD data, you can always repair them in Pixies itself. So what repair does is it repairs the shapes, the, the faces, and in case there are duplicated, duplicated faces, it would remove them. 
uh, most importantly, it would optimize the loops and the topology so that it's more optimal for tessellation. All right, so we'll just run this once. It's a really quick process. And once that's done, we can move on to tessellating. So that's just as easy as selecting cat, tessellate, and select the quality that you want. All right, so it ranges from low, medium, high to very high. And all of these basically just change the various settings here, max sag, the max length, the angle, um, <clears throat> and then just to yeah get the quality that you want. So I'm going to just settle for medium for now, just so that we get something reasonable. And you can always tweak this later on, so I'll show you. So hit Tesla, and there you go. We have our model created and ready for action. Now that we've tessellated this, you can say that we now have a triangle count of 68,722. We also have part occurrences. There are 75 different model parts here in the instances. Um, cool thing is you can see that Pixies recognizes that some of these are duplicates. Uh, if you select and select the instances, you can see certain parts are uh, correlated with one another. Now, uh, all you can do is further optimize this. You can see there, this is a fairly complex model. There are a couple, there's a lot of holes in this. And if you're bringing it into to a 3D visualization tool, if you want something that's interactive, normally you'd have to uh, sacrifice some poly count for interactivity, for some real-time, uh, for, for real-time in, interaction. Um, and this is because uh, this is just a, part of a car break. Imagine if we have a whole car, um, that's going to be way more than 68,000 and by many orders of magnitude. So we have to be reasonable about how detailed we want this uh, brick model to be. Right? So if you look at the wireframe, you can see that it is pretty dense. So we can really cut this down by a lot more. So turn this off. And we'll select the surfaces with the holes first here. And these holes, if you're a 3D artist, you'll know that these can be represented by just simple texture from far away. So when you're, especially when you're viewing from this far away, you won't actually notice those geometric holes on the surfaces of the bricks. So what we can do is select all of them and then hit mesh or uh, optimize mesh and remove holes. All right, we'll select the default remove through holes, execute. You can see that the holes will disappear. All right, we've kind of reduced our poly count from 60, 60 plus thousand to 55,000. And if we look at the wireframes, the holes are still there, All right? The information is still retained, but what we can do is further optimize this by decimating it to a lower quality, All right? There were, there, by removing that topology here. So I'm going to go and select all of them, hit optimize and decimate to quality. And I'll set this to a medium, just to test. And here we go. That's further reduced. And we're now down from 68,000, I think it was 68,000 to 44,000. So that's a lot of uh, poly count saved. And next, we're going to take a look at how we can remove hidden geometries. Now, if we look at the calipers here, you can see there's a lot of complex structure hidden beneath this, um, this caliper, right? So if I hide this, you'll notice that there's some cylinders and some intricate little uh, parts that's hidden behind there. And uh, most of these are not visible to the user, so it's no reason to actually have them in the model uh, because even though you don't see it, the the, the rendering engine actually considers them in the calculation for lighting and shadows and all of that. Um, and all those geometries behind the occluded geometries will still be rendered in a way, especially if they're dynamic geometry. So uh, you want to get rid of like hidden objects like that, things behind that. Um, and sometimes, of course, to, to do it manually would be a lot of work. So you can actually rely on pixies to find out um, Kind of project uh, these the, the models onto like various cameras to detect 
what objects are not visible from all angles. All right, so we can do that by selecting the entire object itself, further optimize it, and say remove, do a hidden removal. So hidden removal will delete parts or patches of polygons that are not viewed around a sphere of the scene. So basically Pixies will just place cameras all around in a sphere and try to find parts that are not visible to those any of those cameras. Where they could be parts, they could be patches, or they could be individual triangle polygons. For this, let's just remove uh, certain parts, right? And we'll just run execute it once. Uh, it's not going to take a long time. And just after a few seconds, we can have our parts hidden. So you can see that like, certain parts are not visible. Some parts are visible. So we can just leave it at that and see that it's already uh, reduced our poly count significantly from 40 to 35,000. And that's really helpful when you need to optimize things really quickly for uh, visualization. Now, sometimes you may want to bring back some detail in some of your geometries. Maybe you tessellated with a quality that's too low and it's not enough. Uh, you want to bring out the um, the definition of certain uh, parts of your object. So if you look at closely into these Pixies logo here, um, you can see that the in the Pixies logo, it doesn't have a really nice definition. Some of the curves here are a bit janky. Um, and that's because the tessellation uh, quality you brought it in with was just medium. All right. So in parts like this, you can actually retessellate them without having to re-import the entire model again. Uh, you can just go over here and do CAD, retessellate, and choose a higher quality setting, execute. You can see now we have a better looking Pixies logo. And then the one last thing I want to show you inside uh, Pixies is how you can generate several LOD chains. So LOD, if you're not familiar, stands for level of detail. Basically, it's, it gives you uh, several level of details of uh, your one single mesh so that you could swap them out for when, depending on the distance of your uh, viewer, your camera to the object itself. So actually, if as you've seen before, if you view for your object from far away, you don't really need that much detail on your object. Uh, as opposed to viewing it up close, you may need more details to represent like, certain definitions of your object. So what we can do is actually within uh, Pixies itself, have it generate an LOD chain um, that gives you three levels of LODs from zero, one to two, uh, two being the lowest uh, poly count. So this is just a simple one click process. You just select the mesh that you want, hit process, generate LODs and execute. So just take a few seconds, depending on the quality of your mesh, you can see now in here, this caliper itself now has three different separate LODs, zero being the highest. So let me just do a quick separation of all of these uh, so you can see uh, them side by side. So I'll just shuffle, the, shuffle this up there and check this up there as well, negative 400. And let's say let's fit all of these in view. Okay, and if you look at the wireframe, uh, it's not a big difference, but you can see that the top most uh, model that we've generated definitely has lower density of lines and edges and polygons as compared to the ones at the bottom. If I select each and every one of them one by one, you can see the one at the bottom, LOD0. Right now here, its triangle selection is reported to be 14,400. LOD1 has 13,000 and LOD2 has only 8,000 uh, poly count. There's only 8,000 triangles there. So you can see that you can use, um, you know, generate LOD chains to further optimize your, uh, your meshes, uh, particularly useful for rendering. If you're viewing your models from far away, you want to swap out these two you know, for the lower model, uh, lower density model there. Okay, so that's basically it for Pixie Studio. I'm gonna move on to Pixie's plugin, which is something that you can use directly in Unity. Uh, and this will be really fun. So 
let's move on and we're back in unity and here i'm going to show you how you can use pixies plugin to leverage a subset of the pixie studio uh, features such as uh, importing tessellation and uh, decimation to kind of improve your workflow within unity and also how you can automate certain processes also your pipeline in preparation in, in preparing your CAD data for visualization. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually go up here to the Pixies menu. So the Pixies plugin will actually uh, show up as a menu item up top and also as a context contextual right click uh, menu um, when you hover over a, an object like a mesh data. So I'll show you that in a bit. But first of all, let's just import a new model. I'm going to import the Residence Rosa Parks IFC file. And I'm just going to leave these at its um, default settings. Okay. And the mesh quality is set at, uh, let's set it to, let's set it to high for now. And let's import. And there we go. We've imported the model and you can see it manifesting itself inside the Unity editor as this prefab, but you don't see it in the game view nor the scene view. That's because if I hit F, you'll see that it's actually floating up in the sky over here, way above, although its positioning is set to 0, 0, 0, it's not actually visible within the camera view. Right, it's actually quite far away. So as you saw back in Pixie Studio, what we did was we, we could actually change the pivot point of the models that we import. And we can actually do the same thing here inside Unity. All right, let me just remove this console log and look at the Pixies menu. So under the Pixies menu, there's a toolbox sub menu that lets you access some of the subset features of Pixie Studio. You can see we have things like merging and also moving pivot points. So let's go ahead and remove the pivot point. Let's hit that. And let me just refresh my window in case it goes crazy. Um, now let's select this. Uh, we don't have to include the children. We can move this to the center of our bounding box. Execute. And now we have our pivot point at the center. And we'll reset our position to 0, 0, 0 and check from our game view. There we have it. We can now see our property. Okay. Next, we're going to take a look at how we can optimize our scene. So if we look at the, the residence and zoom in on some of these parts over here, you'll see that these models, these tables are kind of separated. So if you know anything about 3D rendering, you'll know that the more geometries you have, the more passes uh, you have to render. Uh, basically, there's more instructions that your CPU has to relay to your GPU to render. So each of these will be individually passed to your GPU to render. So that, that will take uh, quite a bit of time um, for uh, quite a bit of time, but it kind of impacts the efficiency of your render. So if you look at your stats right now, we have about 7,000 batches. It's actually more than that. If you have to zoom out further from the scene, um, you have 7,000 batches, which is pretty high amount. So we can further optimize this by actually merging all of this. So normally you would pass this to your artist and tell them, hey, you need to fix this. This shouldn't be a separate mesh, right? Or you could actually fix it right here using Pixies, all right? We'll just go into mesh and this should be actually hierarchy and merge All right you can hit merge execute and now this becomes one object and of course if you want to move the pivot point you can do so uh you can do yeah you can see when you're importing things from cat data a lot of these things are separated so what you really want to do is have them all merge together all right, so you can merge all of these as well. Uh, and include the children because we're selecting the parent here. I hit execute. And now they've become one. 
right? So this will really optimize your rendering. Of course, we didn't do uh, quite that much, so you're not going to see much changes here. Yeah, it's still 7,000, of course. Now, let's look at some other things here. You'll notice on the right side, we have the metadata that's imported with our uh, all these meshes. Right? You can see this is for the sofa, the outdoor furniture. Um, so each furniture, you can see they, they tell us that they were made in uh, Revit. Right, so it's a Revit file, it's made in 2019. Uh, things associated with it, like, uh, okay, it's a it's an outdoor furniture. Uh, it's got a tag for, maybe it's a model number or something. Uh, and this is useful because we could use this information to automate certain processes. So an, a great example is this thing over here. Outdoor wall, Scott's wall mount. It's a really long name. But what it is essentially is it's a light fixture, right? So you can see its name is it's a visa light fixture, Milwaukee, maybe made in the USA, made in Revit, and it's got a bunch of other data here. So what we can do is on the left side is the key for the metadata, on the right side is the value. So on the left side we can say uh, we can filter by oh if the manufacturer. Um, if the key manufacturer contains a value of lighting, we could add a light source to this. So normally what you would do is just add a component and then select light, light, right? But it's, it's quite tedious to add uh, light sources to each and every one of these um, light fixtures. And furthermore, you can see that this, uh, this light isn't actually placed inside the light fixture because again, the pivot point is in place exactly the right place. So we need to, again, once again, reset the pivot point and then uh, apply or add the light component. And there's a couple of different light uh, places there, uh, different instances where this light fixture is at. So it's quite tedious to go through every single one of them. So a cool thing about Pixie's plugin is you can create an automated rule set so I'm going to create one here right now. Create Pixies rule engine rule set, and I'll call this set lights. Okay. I'll add a new rule and say, hey, get uh, all game objects, right? And if any of those game objects have We'll do a filter on its property. If the property name contains manufacturer, let me double check that real quickly. This is manufacturer and the property value contains lighting. What we will do is we modify its pivot point. Let's say over here, pivot move to center of bounding box and then we add a light source with these settings okay so i'm going to zoom out and see the magic happen we'll hit run and all the light source have been assigned cool so that's how the rule engine works and another thing we could do is affect some of the other elements in the scene things like the rocks that we have here uh, we can actually randomize how they're rotated and placed in the scene so let's just go ahead and create a new um, rule set here, rule engine. Uh, I'll call this randomize, randomize blocks. Yeah. And the uh, same thing, what we're going to do is create and get all game objects. And then we filter them by their property. Let's look at what properties we can use for these rocks. All right, one level up. You can see these is the... The key here, we're going to take the reference and then rock on the value side. So we'll go here to randomize rocks, look for reference, and then rock singular. And then here, after we have filtered them, we want to randomize them. So let's go to, let's say, it should be under modify randomize transforms. 
randomized by 180, negative 180 to 180, 180. And we'll also randomize their scale 0 point by 0 0.8 to 1.2. And we'll hit run. You can see now the rocks are randomly rotated, placed. So you can add some variety to your scenes. The one obvious thing that we need to replace is also the trees. So these are the trees that come from Revit. Obviously, they're not the best looking trees. Uh, we want something a little bit more realistic uh, for our environment. So I'm just going to replace this as well. So we can do an object replacement straight from Unity uh, with a rule set. So there's a lot of trees. So I'm going to rely on a rule set to, to do this. So let's go ahead and create a new rule set. Okay, once again, let's right click, create. Big C's rule engine rule set. And I'm going to rename this to replace the place trees. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is same thing. I'm going to get all the game objects and then we'll filter them by their property. All right, we'll check. Let's look at some of their properties and see what they have. And right, the parent here, there's a there is a value called Aspen that we can use as, as a good reference. And on the left side, its key is one of its keys is, is reference. So as long as that, that key reference has the value Aspen, we are able to filter all, all these trees. So I'll just go to paste trees again and add Aspen and this should be reference. Okay, and what we're going to do is we'll replace it with the birch tree but also pays to actually check the orientation of these trees. Because as we saw earlier, when we imported our entire scene, the entire Rosa Parks residence, the pivot points were a bit offset. Sure enough, if you look at these trees here, the y-axis is facing on the ground level to the right instead of facing upright. So our, our model, our prefab that we want to replace it with is going to actually face upwards this way. So what we need to do is actually rotate this right side up first, then replace it. So this value is negative 90. I'm going to take that, reset this first, and do this under our replace trees. So I'll go over here and do a set transform negative 90, and then replace the game objects with our birch tree. We have this birch prefab right here. Okay, click that and hit run. And boom, we have all our trees being replaced, all facing the right side up. And it's just overall a better looking environment. We can of course also rotate all of these uh, trees so that they all have a slight variation and also scale them with what we did with the rocks earlier. Okay, so that's how set up the rule engine. Next. Okay, so that's how you can automate the process of importing your uh, cat data and dressing it up and readying it up for uh, visualization in Unity. So you just need to set up the rule sets and run it. But say you don't want to run it every time you um, bring it into Unity. You don't want to run it manually. You can actually have this rule set run as part of your import process. So in here, I have this rule folder where I've created a bunch of rules to fully process my entire residence model here. Or it could be any uh, future cat models uh, in, in this regard. So what I'm doing here is it's changing all the materials for the roof, the ballast, the parquet, um, the trees, the lights, the, and then it starts to merge and then center everything. So it fixes everything that we just talked about earlier. And instead of just you know, doing it uh, on this manually, manually, instead of creating these rule sets manually again, I can just go back to an empty scene right here. 
re-import that model. Let's look at it you know, here. Let's get that data, the original data file again. Rules of Parks Residences. Let's set this to a medium mesh quality. And then we can apply the rule set as part of the import process. So I'll just go ahead and select what I have here is the full resort processing that I showed you earlier and hit import. So what it's going to do is, while it's importing that, it'll also apply all the rule sets that uh, we've predefined. And there you go. That's the full import. And uh, we can see that all the materials have been replaced. We now have textures on, the, on our buildings. The trees have been placed into the scene. And even this barbecue pit has been assigned a texture and material. You can see the lightings have been placed. So everything that we wanted, uh, that we set in the rule set, has been uh, implemented as soon as we import the entire scene. And to top it off, you can always add on a post-processing uh, volume just to get the mood and lighting that you want. So that's Pixie's plugin. So in summary, with Pixie Studio, you can create optimized 3D assets with perfectly tessellated meshes from almost any CAD model, ready to be exported to any 3D staging tool like Unity 3D, 3ds Max, Maya, and more. It's perfect for bringing complex data from CAD engineering world to the visualization world, allowing effortless integration for creating new and powerful visualization experiences. Not only that, but you're able to also retain the PMI and metadata associated with that CAD engineering file. With uh, Pixie's plugin for Unity, it is a fully integrated plugin for Unity that enables the use of 3D data from the engineering world directly inside Unity. And uh, not only that, but you can repair meshes with commonly used algorithms without having to leave Unity. So things like decimation, UV generation, mesh combine, LOD generation, mesh separation, or even simple pivot point uh, transformations can be done within Unity. And with the rule engine, any processes can be automated with the click of a button. You can also leverage Pixie's loader when you want to offer your users the capacity to import 3D CAD files into your runtime application. And then we have Pixie's scenario processor, which is basically a command line interface tool that can import a 3D file process it uh, according to data preparation scenarios that you define, and then export it as an optimized 3D file. And finally, with Pixis Review, you can visualize and interact with almost any CAD and mesh files intuitively and collaborate on desktop or in VR with your teammates anywhere in the world. Pixis Reviews helps companies and 3D users leverage their CAD data for any visualization scenario. And here we are back again at the diagram showing the end-to-end -end Pixie solution for Unity Pipeline. Hopefully, you'll have a better understanding of bringing in your CAD files into Unity at this point. And what's interesting here is that the Pixie's toolset isn't just limited to developers. With Loader, you can, with Pixie's Loader, you can include this functionality for your end users in your runtime application so that anyone can load up a CAD file and visualize it inside your Unity app. And Pixie Studio and Pixie's Batch can import a wide range of CAD file formats from industry-leading solutions and standards, such as Katia, NX, SolidWorks, Creo, Step, and then output these into tessellated mesh file formats, such as FBX, OBJ, JT, USD, GLTF, and a whole lot more. So here's an extensive list of all the currently supported file formats and should be more added in the future. Uh, so stay tuned in on the Pixies website. And with that, I thank you again for having me here to talk to you about Pixies. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is my contact information. And uh, we'll move on to Q&A. My colleagues and I will be more than happy to take your questions. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Wow, awesome presentation, Sean. Thank you uh, so much for all the hard work you put into that. Um, in the meantime, uh, I'm just going to pull up the prize pack while we're looking at Q&A.
Thanks, Sarah. Uh, please fill in the survey link in the bottom of the chat window. Uh, we appreciate your feedback on our weekly webinars. It helps us to guide what content to deliver to you over the course of the year. And uh, one of our lucky uh, survey completers today will be in will uh, win a Unity swag pack as pictured there. Uh, we give away one of these each week. So please follow that link in the window. Is there any other Q&A there you'd like to answer live, Sean? Not a lot of questions. I think Jifei is like helping me with uh, one of the questions right now. If you have some questions that you thought you may have wanted to ask, just uh, take a look in the Q&A window. There's a list of questions we have already answered throughout the course of the webinar. And of course, uh, you can always reach out to Sean directly or the uh, SAPAC events email uh, email address, which uh, you would have on your uh, email invite when you register for this webinar. Um, if there's any other questions, please feel free to uh, put those over. We're about to sign off. So a couple of seconds, if there's any new ones. There's one there, can, uh, can a 12 year old buy a license in Unity? Um, you can use Unity for uh, free to start out and learn. Um, you can do that on the Learn Unity um, Learn Unity page on Unity. Unity. Just uh, search uh, Download Unity. There's a few more questions. I think, uh, can we load CAD engineering models during runtime or after the build is deployed? Yes, uh, you can. With uh, uh, I think it was mentioned earlier, you you can actually with one of the Pix uh, Pixies package actually allow the users to use in runtime. Just a question on the swag pack. Uh, one of today's attendees, if you registered, uh, there will be a lucky draw, which will take place not long after this webinar. If you've registered and your name is pulled out, we'll be in contact with you via email for your address to send it. Okay, thanks folks. All of the uh, questions have been answered now. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next week uh, for more new content from the Unity SAPAC team. Thank you very much. Have a great